the whole exercise, when you look at it, it is not something that we can say that INEC has done so much well. If you look at the all everything that go with it, one at the centers where people are asked to register, it's not enough. I think what INEC supposed to have done is to make it make the registration center to be more closer to the people that people will have the mind of going freely to register we that we are within the category i mean we are within the the the, the age category of youth we need to put in our effort that will wrestle power from the elders these are the people that are recycling themselves within the corridor of power that we need to participate actively in the registration, not only in the registration, and also to actively involve in the politics so that we know how the others do, the, the way they are doing it, not only in the way they are doing it, that when eventually we have the power, the political power with us, we also know what we do with the power. For example, when you use APC as an example, that you want to contest for the position of president, you have to deposit 100 million naira to purchase form. How many of our youth do you think that can avoid to pay this money? And that is one of the areas that youth have been denied the opportunity of coming to power to play their role. We have many youth that have excelled in their choosing career. Today, when you look at the people that destroy this country, they are not youth, they are elders and leaders within the society. So I believe that the, our elders need to quit the stage so that the youth can take over. A situation where we have one political party is not good for the country, where we have uh, one opposition party is not good for the country. We thank God that we have about three, four political parties now that are contesting this election. We have 18 political parties in Nigeria, but we have four major ones that are contesting the SDP, uh, Labour Party, uh, APC, and PDP. It's good for the country. You are in Nigeria, I'm in Nigeria. Our listeners at home, they are all Nigerians. You can choose yourself the political party that you choose and me to support and it is good you understand at the end of the day a political party will emerge the, a candidate from a political party will emerge and by the time the political party emerge i think other party will have we are going to have opposition that will criticize government policies if the policies are not the policies that we make we fulfill the desire of the of the people of this country. Who is that man? Who is that woman that is capable to take this country to its glorious position? I think that is the man we should all support. It is not on the basis of religion. It should not be on the basis of ethnicity. We should look at it. If we are going to have a president who is a a, a, a Muslim, a vice president who is a Muslim, the Senate president, a Muslim, the House of Representative leader, speaker, a Muslim, the Secretary to the federal government, a Muslim, in as much as they will make life bearable for Nigerians, I think it is good for us. We have, for the past seven years now, or seven years plus now, we have a vice president who is a Christian? We cannot point at any significant thing that he has done, even to his own people, not to talk of Nigeria. Khan of today are not Khan of yesterday. Khan is now an affiliate of Nigerian political party. We have a president of Khan in Nigeria that the sitting president bought a jet for. And we also read in the news that he used his jet to carry money from Nigeria to South Africa with some elements. So people have lost interest in Khan, Christian Association of Nigeria. So I, as a deacon, 
I don't have trust in them, and I don't believe Khan has anything to do with Nigeria development. It should be capacity, it should not be religion, it should not be ethnicity, it will not help the situation. It will not help. We should look at the man that is qualified to hold the position, that have good desire, at least to make Nigeria a better place and to give life to all of us, life that is bearable. Yeah. I'm not a politician, you have said it all. I mention my name as deputy director, as a deputy president campaign for democracy. So I am not a politician. So I may have my sympathy and my vote will decide. I will decide my support to whosoever I wish that should be with my vote. The situation in the country today sincerely speaking, has practically and clearly shown that we have a deaf and a dumb leadership that is piloting the ship of the country and we are not going to the right direction. So I am expecting that the next president that we emerge through the votes of the masses should be a president that we have a clear hearing and we have good vision so that when we speak, it will listen. When we give hand signal, it will also see, so that we can know where to choose pictures. You will agree with me to a certain extent that in Nigeria of today, there is nothing that is working. The worst of it is the issue of security. And if security, if there is failure in the area of security, I want to tell you that there is failure in the total aspect of the country. It is only in the environment, in an environment where there is peace, where people can go out freely to participate in their daily activities that you will expect development to take place. But in Nigeria today, there is no any area in this country where you can quickly refer to that if you go to this area, you have your peace. No. Go to northeast, go to north central, go to northwest, go to southeast, go to south south, and go to southwest. You will see that in all these geopolitical zones, there is no zone that you can sleep with your two eyes closed. Threat, threat, and threat everywhere. It's a man that will not listen to, to advice, is a man that will not believe in anybody except himself. You are sad that he continue to make things difficult for Nigerians. There is nobody in this country today that believes in the National Assembly. And that is the truth and fact you need to know. That today, nobody, the leadership of the National Assembly under Senator uh, Amman, there is nobody in this country, even the baby in the womb of, her mo of his mother or her mother will not believe in the leadership of the National Assembly. They have mortgaged our interests. And it is a very clear thing. So when at this point, the election we, we have just February next year, which is about five, six months to the election now, that they are now calling for the impeachment of the president. It means that they have secret agenda, secret agenda which they, want, they have in their mind to unfold. So when we, they impeach the president, who is going to take over? The vice president. Do you remember that when the president himself was sick and was taken out of the country, the Kaba in the Asoro, they reviews, they did not allow Shibajo, the vice president, to take over. It took time before they allow him to take over. So if president is impeached today, what assurance do you have? that Oshibajo will take over in line with the provision of the constitution. So the election for next year, 2023, it's a way of saying that the election will not take place. It becomes a challenge to you as an individual and me as a Nigerian individual that we should rise against the call. Let this man, is, once we have known that it's a failure, that he has failed, let us allow him to spend his tenure provided by the Constitution of Nigeria.